All right, guys. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> so let's do another traditional best of three Calhoun draft. So my limited ranking, I reached uh, quite high. I reached, I think like crack like top 500 mythic for limited. So I feel like I have some things to share. So pack one, pick one. There's a slumber mount and then there's also a glimpse. I think a glimpse is a better first pick. This is a good two color card, but Gruul as a rule is not really the best archetype. This is more of like a card for supporting snow decks, but Glimpse is just uh, good with a lot of things. All right, so I'm not really crazy about this card, but I do agree that it's worth taking. I've actually done very well just casting Omen Keel on turn two and getting in. So it's not crazy because what this does is Yeah, I mean, you just, you get to hit lands every every turn and you, you get to draw cards. Yeah, so it exiles your opponent's cards and you steal their lands. So you can also steal utility, utility lands with this thing. I mean, it's not going to happen as often, obviously, because even if it doesn't, they need to be in your color or you need to be like some, some five color snow deck. But this is, you know, I think, I don't know, pe people don't cast Omen Keel enough, I, I feel. In fact, I've never had it played against me, but I've played it a couple of times and it, it worked out very well. So here it's a choice between Squash and Mistwalker. I want to keep cutting blue. Uh, Mistwalker's also, Mistwalker also powers out Glimpse since it's a shapeshifter. So, wow, now, okay, so now we're heavily incentivized to take Snowlands. There's also a Shimmer Drift Veil in here. I think I still have to take the Avalanche Caller and just now I can start cutting Snowlands aggressively. Obviously I'm looking for forests, mountains, and islands as my top three. I don't know, I guess like maybe in a vacuum, black is stronger than red, but somehow I get the feeling that for snow, red is better, assuming you can get Svela. Like Svela is the game changer. So now this is the, pick that I was talking about. There's also Feed the Serpent, and that's the second one. We just saw another one. I don't know. <laughs> I want snow, snow Lands for Avalanche Caller, but did we really see any like super strong red? I don't think we did. I'm gonna maybe take the responsible pick here. Oh, now there's no black cards in here. That's unfortunate. Now I insta regret taking Feet the Serpent. I should have just taken any other card. Now there's a Sculptor. There's also a Berserker, which is a good card. I think with Avalanche Caller, probably more interested in the Sculptor. I found that I, I mean, I like drafting control decks more in this format. I really like gold, gold vein pick, but I'm not going to pass a mist walker. All right, we could end just, we could end up just being mono blue. That's also a possibility. I'm happy taking uh, Aubrey Raven, continuing to cut blue cards deep into this pack. Yeah, and I think I mentioned this before, but the reason why I'm not going to play Kaldheim best of one anymore is because I already hit top 1200 mythic ranking, which qualifies me for the championship. So it's just not efficient to use your chips or not your chips to use your gems. Sorry for using a poker term. It's not efficient to use your gems for best of one, because if you can three and zero often enough, you actually end up doing better in terms of your gem optimization and uh, gold generation and whatnot if you're playing best of best of three. Well, now there's a slumber mound and there's a raise the jogger. I guess I'm more likely to be blue black. We did see a bunch of feed the serpents late, so we might get rewarded with a lot of good black cards late. Pack two, pack three. All 
Now, this is very strange that this wheels because this is a good card. Like, especially with two Mistwalkers. So now, I mean, with Squash wheeling, I mean, this, this deals six to creatures or Planeswalkers for two mana. You know, if you're if you're green blue and you have enough shapeshifters, you can quite wow another one. All right, well, so now we're looking for the gold three color uh, giant. I keep forgetting his name. So, do we want thief or seize the spoils? Probably thief is still a little bit better. I found this is much better late game actually. I mean, if you top deck this and you're about even with your opponent, you know, seeing the top of their card and then, you know, either leaving it on top or putting it in the graveyard. Like there was a game I won where uh, a Mistwalker was the top card of my opponent's uh, library. I just let him keep it because I was I was guaranteed to win next turn because he had no, you know he had no cards in hand. He was drawing that, so um, I think this this has some additional utility than people initially gave it credit for. So now there's a snow covered forest for my, sorry, snow covered island for Avalanche Caller. There's also a Titan, but we're not really an aggro deck. So I think it's just the island to make our Avalanche Caller better and potentially we'll get some Berg Striders. What am I really passing? There's no good black cards. And Doomscar and Tuscary Fireworker are good in red, but I'm definitely I'm definitely blue. I want to have every reason to play this. And now there's a Bergstrider, but there's also a Behold. I think I'm going to take a Bergstrider. I have some card draw with Glimpse. I have card draw with the uh, Kasima on both sides, actually. And now there's another Burke Strider. And then there's a Poison the Cup. But I have two squashes, which kind of like do the same thing. I have, actually, you know what? I, I want to try to make this Giants deck work. So I don't need that many slow, Snowlands to make Burke Strider good. I don't really need this because I'm not playing white, but I will play every mist, almost every mist walker that I can get. How many is too many? Three is not too many. Finn is Finn has just gone up and up, by the way. All right, there's another giant. All right, so now we're pretty clearly giants. I don't mind having one of these in my sideboard in best of three, and I'm just waiting for the chance I get to actually play one of these and have it do something. Having said that, I'm not going to take it over Rune of Light. Um, yeah, so let's just cut this stuff. Feed the Serpent is not splashable. So this is an interesting pick. So I'm neither green nor black. But I do like a masked vandal and I do like Snowlands for Avalanche Caller and Bergstrider. The more responsible pick is probably Dwarven Reinforcements, especially if we can get some equipment. <laughs> of course, this is frustrating that I'm finishing pack two with one Snowland for three Bergstriders and uh, an avalanche caller. So that's a bit unfortunate. Probably just take the Craven Hulk. So the key team playables, I need four more cards. And I'm, at this point, I'm taking Snowlands over pretty much anything. Maybe I should have taken that Azoria Snowland even. Oh, 
vault rubber becomes a bit more justified if you get the dragon gold span dragon i think it's called it makes your treasure sack for two so you get a little bit more value so if you have like some dwarf and and uh dragon synergies you can play it but that's like one draft in a hundred let's be realistic oh geez maybe i get a world tree and i play this or you know maybe maybe this makes makes the deck like at this point with a bunch of High toughness creatures provoke the trolls becomes a little bit better. Like you can get Craven Hulk to get in for for nine. Um, yeah, like I'm just gonna take the snow covered planes that I'm not gonna play. Smashing success, nice. There we go. I'm bringing it in against snow decks. <laughs> can I splash this? This could be very strong in our deck. There's also Shimmer Drift Veil. I think I got to take the Shimmer Drift Veil. Like I said, at this point, I'm taking Snow Covered Lands over pretty much anything because I want to consistently be able to get value off Caller and Berkstrider. <laughs> There's the World Tree, but no, I'm just going to take the Island. Why can't I take it? What just happened? Ugh. Sometimes Arena has this problem where, I don't know if this happens to anyone else. Yeah, I can't select it. Okay. I think it picked it up. I had to click on confirm pick. But that that's really a bug that should not happen. Yeah, ing is fine. I'm not splashing doom scar. So this is interesting. So there's a Crush the Week, and then there's also another Squash. I, I like having access, and especially in best of three, for side, especially like for sideboard purposes, I definitely want, want to have access to at least one uh, Crush the Week. I'm not going to necessarily main deck it, but against uh, aggro, like Boros Selesnya decks, it could just be an absolute blowout. I think it's probably still Mountain. I do want Run Amux, but not over Snow Covered Lands. Interesting, so there's the Helm for Dwarven reinforcements and in general, it's not the worst thing in the world on a Mistwalker. I think I still take the Mistwalker. Because actually Mistwalker also works with uh, Provoke the Trolls. You can't pump it, but it is six in the air. So I think this, this can be a bit of a combo. If your opponent's tapped out, you know, why not? You can just have a solid turn, put him, put him at a point where he can't really attack back into you. Ooh, this is, this is a difficult ch choice. So Runamuck or Firewalker. These actually like power each other out, so they're both good. There's also Snow Covered Island. So I have 6, 29, so I have 23 playables already. Now I'm just going to take the island. I, I don't want to play like Longboat, but I'll get, like I have, I can even main deck Crush the Week. That's not the worst thing. I don't think I play Hoggy Mom. Sh 
sure. Nice little util utility land on the wheel. I think I have enough top end. I don't need Hoggy Mob. Take this for Vault Progress. By the way, this, this card is just awful. Like you really would, I think it's, maybe they tried making this for standard. I think it's quite bad in standard also. I don't know what deck would want to play this. This is just either like bad design or it's a trap. So I think this is the deck. So let's see, we have uh, 18, six, and we have six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, blue, two, three, four, five, six, seven, red. 15 creatures, nine spells, 16 lands. I mean, these really cost two. So I have three, five drops. So I think this is fine. Plus with the Fjord, and a veil, I'm, I'm getting some mana consistency. So I don't know, I think this is like a, a B deck. I don't really have a good sideboard plan aside from Crush the Week, which I decided not to main deck. The cut may, may have been for like a Rune of Flight, but with the high power giants, I like Rune of Flights. You don't like, you can just sandbag them in your hand if you don't, if you don't need to play them out until you can put it on like a, here's the stupid four two that uh, pings or you know your bird shot or whatever and you can end the game quite quickly i think it would be nice if they still showed like the relative ranking so you have some idea of who you're playing against even if it's not ranked there's not going to stop you from displaying another player's rank right i don't think that makes the game worse necessarily you have some sense of how well you did against your opponent, depending on his skill level. This card's terrible, but it's still semi-removal in, in this type of deck. Like this is definitely not the nuts giants deck. We're missing the uh, gold giant. We're missing um, demon bolts. But we have we have other good stuff going for us. I could have done that after combat, I guess, but uh, I mean, let's, if he's boasting anyway, you're not doing anything with one mana. Um, so if I play a Mistwalker, he can attack into it. I guess I'll play a, a Thief and then remove any lands. Yeah, I can stay on top. I'll draw land off Rune of Flight at some point. But again, I have like super low curve. I don't really need more than five lands. I have four already and I'm 40% chance to hit, to hit a land. Interesting. So he might just trade this for a card. He chooses not to. Um, so I think I do want to play Inga here and line up my draws. Plus this makes attacking very difficult for our opponent because he would not want me to draw, uh, he would not want me to draw lands. So this is interesting. I think I still don't want lands. I guess I can put one land on top because then I can double spell by playing Mistwalker and suspending uh, foretelling Augury Raven, so maybe this is not the worst. But then I'd want it like this, so it comes untapped. Yep. 
Go attacks. Yeah, this is definitely not a card that aggro decks like this want to be facing. Because if he attacks, I mean, I'll, I'm throwing everything in front of everything. Just can't end well for our opponent. You don't want to let it, let a deck like mine draw three where I have, you know, Birch Striders, a bunch of uh, annoying interaction, you know, Avalanche Caller. Interesting. So it looks like he just wants to draw a card. I'm fine with that. Sure. So let's see, if I play Augury Raven, I can start attacking with it next turn. I wanted to foretell it, but I can also go Mistwalker, Rune of Light, and then start getting in. So there's two different ways that I can double spell, actually. No attempts. Yeah, so it just skipped a little bit. Uh, feed the Serpent, hit Draugr. After I blocked an attacking Firewalker with Draugr, he boasted. Raider went to a 2-5. And now we're just kind of staring at each other. So maybe he was hoping that I would block with my uh, Mistwalker, but that's just not going to happen. This guy's doing a lot of work for, for our opponent this game. Nice. So now I can keep up this Daneful Stroke. So the question is, what's better, Craven Hulk or Dwarven Reinforcement? I guess Craven Hulk can double block this better as a 4-7. And I'm going to keep up this Daneful Stroke. I would say our opponent is ahead based on the, the card count. So he's got four cards in hand versus R2, plus his board is better developed. He's got a thread that can get out of control sooner or later. Yeah, I'm just gonna stroke that. Like, what's he, I don't know what he's gonna sacrifice, but whatever he sacrifices, he's gonna draw a card. Um, and I don't want him to kill uh, Inga. That would give him better attacks. So let's just disdainful stroke this now. I forgot what's phase two on this. Ah, this card's a card. Yeah, I mean, that, that wouldn't hit us, but he can then bring back like, Firewalker as a 4-3. So it feels like an appropriate use of uh, this Daneful Stroke. Good enough for me. Well, it looks like we're drawing some cards. My guess is he has another Jarl. So what does that mean for me? So I guess I want to block like this and like this. Oh no, what am I doing? Um, and I just take, I take the three from this. 
Do I want to double block something? I don't think so. I think this is fine. Well, I may be interested in racing now, now that I have a provoke the trolls. I can gum up the ground with like Dwarven reinforcements. So let's see. I have a feeling the tide has shifted in our favor. I just don't know what, what the best play is. So I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Seven, so I can go Dwarven Reinforcements and Mistwalker, attack with everything. That works for me. Okay, so I got some options. I can Provoke the Trolls or I can Squash. If I Provoke the Trolls, then I can still suspend Dwarven Reinforcements. Because I mean, I don't really want to use squash on a three one. But this, this can also win the game for me. All right, so I think I'm gonna go squash. This doesn't give trample, does it? Yeah, so it's not like I would get a bunch of damage through. So we get in now. We could also pump. Do we want to pump? We can pump once and play Mistwalker. I think that's better, slightly better use of our mana. Sure. So now I even have a block on the on the frenzied raider. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, I think now it's just game over. The reason to pump instead of play drawn reinforcements is because I have provoked the trolls. So if he taps out, it's just lethal. Nice. So that's game one. So the question is, do I want a crush the weak against our opponent? Let's have a look. I think I do, right? So there's one target, two targets, three targets, four targets. That's enough already, five. So that's an easy decision. Crush the weak is in. So what works worst against our opponent. This Daneful Stroke wasn't great. We didn't see too many targets. It looks like it's a very low curve, but there's already one, two, three, yeah, it's still decent enough. I guess we can take out one Rune of Flight. I still like Mists of Lajara to make sure we don't get run over. There's even an argument for a longboat, to be honest. Mist walkers can crew it. Question is, can I can I take something out? I'm probably going to be on the draw. Can I go to 15 lands? That, is that greedy? I just kill him with the longboat and omen kill. Off mist walkers. <laughs> no, I don't think that's necessary. Because we also have the utility land. Like the reason not to go to 15 is because of um, Frostpire. Because this is uh, six to use, five, and you got to tap it. So that's six mana. Easy keep. And hopefully we'll be able to play Glimpse off mist walker.
Um, probably still suspending Augury Raven because if I have my third land, I can get a Mistwalker. I got my land anyway. So now it's, uh, yeah, easy suspend Raven. Like when you, early, when you have a choice between drawing cards or putting uh, a threat on the board, it should not really be a decision. You should, you should just put the threat on the board. So now I definitely, I want to be able to trade. I don't want him to boast more than once. So now, unfortunately, I'm forced to be a bit less mana efficient, but I want to make sure I can get this off the board because this can give a significant card advantage to a deck like uh, our opponents playing, especially like if we're, if we're on the draw, we're being pressured. Plus he's got a Jarl, so I don't, I'm not really crazy about blocking anyway. Now he gets to draw two cards. It's pretty, it's pretty nasty. So hopefully he doesn't get a land because if it's a non-land, he can't cast it. Oh, he didn't even boast. Never mind. He decided not to boast. So I don't have a second source of blue. I can't play Glimpse and Mists. So it's just an easy Craven Hulk. I hate that I cannot block, but I have a snow-covered mountain. So as long as I get any land, I can keep things tabbed down for two turns and just start hammering away. So we could play Glimpse, hoping to find an island to play Mistwalker. Or we could attack first. Now I think we glim we glimpse first. There's the island. Perfect. Yeah, now we attack. Play Mist Walker, and then we can start stridering next turn. So this represents a Jarl. I'm just going to take it. He's probably going to play him anyway. Ah, uh, sure. Oh, that's not that's not very efficient use of mana. So now what I want to do is I want to tap the Firewalker because this will prevent our opponent from Boasting. And uh, yeah. I guess I should go glimpse now in case I can find another island. I can pump. I don't think I played a land this turn. So probably just squash. No, I think Provoke the Trolls is better because then there's the, the like his, we're playing against um, an opponent that has low, low toughness creatures. So this has the flexibility of killing something or dealing an extra five damage. Like this is just lethal next turn, right? If I can get in with one of these. I think it's like between Berkstrider, Provoke, like it's just game. We're so far ahead. Like even if he goes uh, uh, Demon Bolt, Berkstrider, plays another creature, I can still tap down whatever he plays with Berkstrider and he's got a double block Craven Hulk with Avenger and Cavalry. So we're very far ahead. Sure. That's basically game right there. Barring some sort of like weird sweeper. Oh, you want to attack too? Yeah, I'm still not blocking. <laughs> if I didn't do it once, I'm not going to do it twice. So he keeps trying to get me with Jarl. But once like you've shown it, it's uh, very easy to play around. Short. Ah, interesting. Interesting that he chooses to kill the Mistwalker. Why would you kill the Mistwalker? Especially when I draw Crush the Weak. So is this, just, is this just game? Yeah, right. Oh, no, this is three mana. So 
So let's see, what if I, what if I play Avalanche Caller? And I can send another 4-4 in. I think this is better because I, I mean, like, I don't need to crush the weak now. This is better use of my mana and this is more damage. So he's probably going to double block one of these. That's fine. He also gets to draw a card and lose a life. So looking for an answer, obviously no blocks. Well, he's got a, he found a Ravager. So can he kill something? This is a wizard, this is Berserker. Any targets so he can ping me for one. He would need to play something else. He does have a treasure he can sack, so it's not impossible that he makes two, two plays, but it, I think it's still just game over. Sure. All right, you got there. I think we want to play first. Mm. I'd hate to enchant the land with Rune of Flight, but in an emergency, we can always do that. I'd rather save it for the for the Basalt Ravager. Um, hmm. yeah, I guess the responsible play would be to enchant the island. Ooh, Kasima, you say. So we're up against Golgari. Hmm. I'm not sure. I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess we just play Casino. Uh, put a voice counter, take action. So do we just provoke here? Yeah, I don't want OP drawing cards. Let's plays around any giant growths or any pump effects. 
there's the two mana spell that uh, brings a creature back after it dies. So it's better to just do it when he's tapped out because, I mean, depending on what's on his deck, that boast ability could be a game ender. Okay, okay. <laughs> so he exiled my rune. Ouch. How dare you? Hmm. So we could Basalt Ravager ping him for one, and then we have a blocker. Why not? I don't really want to block as this can start getting in for damage with Rune of Flight. Especially if I draw a land, I can play like Rune Mistwalker. Mistwalker can block at least one of these things. Okay. No attacks. All right, good. So what's the plan? Do we just start smashing? We can always just uh, put, put our guard up. We can play Mistwalker and keep up Squash in case he's got a uh, fight spell or something like that. I like that idea as well. So we're not going to attack yet. We're just going to play Mistwalker and keep up Squash. And even if one of our creature dies, I could still Squash because both of these are giants. No attacks and turn. Because I don't, I want to deal with this before it gets too out of hand. So as a 5-5, five, five, it still dies to squash. As a 7-7, seven, seven, it's not going to work. Ooh, that's nice. Please play something else on that card. I don't even mind him like drawing a card. Because I'm guessing he's setting up for a double spell. Sure. So now we're going to squash. Now, should I do it now? Yeah, I should just do it now. I mean, I could have let him attack first, but I don't think it matters. So this will drain us for three every turn. Uh, I, I don't mind losing three right now. Another squash is not bad. So let's go Rune of Flight and see what we get. This Daneful Stroke's actually good. So now I'm a bit more comfortable attacking and we can start trying to race. So any lands I draw, I don't really want to play. The reason I'm blocking the one one is because I can't block pump and use the stainful stroke. Yep. It's a good enough target to counter. Sure. I guess I could have also sagged the rune, but I, I like having a rune. <clears throat> <laughs> now I think I'm going to sag the rune because I don't want to take too much more damage. And um, with Bergstrider, our opponent's not going to have good blocks. Do I even do I even need to block? Do I even need to block? I don't think I need to block because with Bergstrider, I'm going to be on the offensive now, and I can sag rune for. No damage to myself. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. That's okay. I guess we can always dump Craven Hulk. Like given given what's what we're drawing, we know the next three cards that we're drawing. That misclick's not a big deal. Maybe who knows? Maybe it's even the right play. Wait, what did he do? Ah, he wants to do it twice. Well, now we can sag the rune.
And now I guess we'll take three because I want all my attackers. So let's go pay with snow. Tab this, get in with everything. So do I, do I have any ways of dealing with annoying artifacts? I don't think so. I guess, uh, I guess I can disdainful stroke it. That's about the only way of dealing with it. This is a very strong card, especially in the late game, once your opponent gets up to like eight mana like we have here. I mean, if he taps out and, and uh, okay, so he's looking for answers. So now he can't even use this anymore. Let's see what he finds. I don't think he's going to find much. I may not even need the Burke Strider to win because I got three lethal attackers. He's got one blocker. So this could be just a concession right now. Looking at my graveyard for some reason. All right, we'll let him think about it. Okay. So sideboard options. Crush the Week does get the Mentor and the 1-1. One -one. We saw two Mentors, so I think, I think Crush the Week could be strong. Um, he is playing the one three that destroys artifacts and enchantments, so we could cut a rune again. I don't think Mist is particularly good against him, but if we're going to cut something, it's probably just a, a rune that doesn't synergize with much else in our deck. So I wouldn't mind drawing a, a Kasima and just playing Omen Keel. Next turn attacking with Mistwalker. Yeah, we're gonna have to kill this. This is an, this is an annoying card against uh, elves. Ouch. So. Yeah, not not too many not too many choices, just Mistwalker, and then I can squash. Yeah, obviously no blocks. Does he have to reveal what he puts on top? No, he doesn't have to. Oh, he didn't even boast. Interesting. <clears throat> All right, well, now we play Ravager and we kill the Mentor. So that's pretty straightforward. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm an idiot. I should have killed, I should have killed the Avenger. Uh, was a mis that was a misplay. That was a terrible misplay, but like I just traded one point of toughness for him drawing a card and losing a life. <laughs> so maybe we do want him to, to take the damage, but no, that was, let's be honest, that was a misplay. He's going to draw another card now. He 
Well, this is scary because I mean, he's got five mana already. Most of the bombs in your deck are like, you know, five mana and up. So I'm guessing he's putting something, something sweet up top, but we got back to back Birch Striders. Maybe we can just win with those. It'll be funny, like if, if we end up winning by one point of damage, in which case in retrospect, killing the elf would have been a would have been a good play because it it makes the opponent take a damage. Well, this is nice because now we have both Crush the Weak and Squash. But let's just Strider. I mean, next turn we can even like crush the weak and squash to wipe the board. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you played that before I played Luna Flight. That's one reason to like sandbag it in your hand. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So I don't want to take five. So I'm just going to, I guess, play Mistwalker as an extra blocker. Chumping. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I guess he does draw a card. But he's taking damage. You know, like at this point, that two points of damage could be the, the difference between winning and losing. Uh, so best scenario is he tries to cast a fight spell. No fight spell. So do I squash now? He, if he has the plus two plus zero, I take seven. That wouldn't be good, but I don't want to take five either. So I'm going to, I'll take my chances. If he's got it, he's got it. Good beats. Nope. Wow, that's also Berserker, Elf Warrior. Yeah, so I mean, the best scenario for me is that like he plays a bunch of X2s. I crush the weak and just slam, and then I can even pump once, twice if I get another land. So that's three, four, eight. And then actually, if he draws a bunch of cards, it's just lethal, <laughs> right? If I, can, if I can kill, if I can force him, like if he plays a bunch of small things and I force him to draw two cards off this, then I have lethal next turn. Ooh, that's a bit scary. Uh, I will lose three life. So pretty straightforward. Let's go rune on Strider. Ah, uh, you know what? I probably should have seen what land I drew. Oh, Birch Strider, you say? I'm short, I'm short. So I can pump twice and then he crags back for six and then I can sacrifice rune. So I'm dead to like a haste creature. There's the six, six mythic, but I'm not gonna play around that. So Blood on the Snow is the only card that he could have, but that's usually played in snow decks. So I'm pretty pretty sure like we just, barring like a pump spell, I'm pretty sure we're good. Yeah, he's looking for answers. So now he can only do one activation. Okay, nice. So on to the finals.
Nice. Okay. So good opening hand. Ooh, do we just play? Do we just play the omen keel? <laughs> I think we do. Let's just do it. I'm going to make a point. Because I can crew this either way with avalanche color or whatever. I mean, opponent's playing one of our colors. Which means that we can't crack any of his uh, utility utility lands, but I don't mind racing. Oh, now he's got a blocker. So we can make this. I don't have any double blue or double red, but I have more blue. So let's make this blue. I want to trade this for Augury Raven. I think I do because it's still at the end of the day, like it's still a two mana card. If I'm spending, if I'm trading two mana for four mana and not losing much else, then I'm happy with that. I didn't get to go off with Omen Keel, but I think it's still a good trade. Like when I look at cards like this, I'd like to think that you know they didn't print the other side for nothing. Like there's a there's a place, time and a place for you to play that. I guess in our in our case, maybe it was wasn't like a hundred percent correct because we did have like um like we could have played Avalanche Caller that first turn as as our two drop instead of playing uh, Omen Kill on turn. Ah, no, other way around. Yeah, we could we could have played uh, Avalanche Call on turn two, but like even if you get in one hit with it, it's pretty good because this ramps you, right? Oh, no, it doesn't ramp. It says you can play it. You don't put it on the battlefield. So it doesn't quite ramp, but it's I think it's still good. I think it's still a good card. So Yeti can block, unlike Craven Hulk. So that means we attack. Interesting. That's aggressive. So you just want to equip that for three. Can we mess with that in any way? So this becomes a four, three. We could still block it with the Yeti. So we can either like suspend augury and keep up this painful stroke, but I have a feeling he's going to equip. So there's no, that that's an argument against using this painful stroke. So I don't want him to gain a bunch of life unanswered. So unfortunately, my only option is to get in for one and uh, I'm just gonna play Augury Raven because this way I could still block if he has removal for one of these two. And if all he does is equip and pass or equip and attack, I can trade off with the Eddie and start getting in for four in the air. Hopefully we draw a land so I can play Walker keeping up this Daneful Stroke because now we're getting into that, that point in the game where you, you can have a blowout with this. You counter like a five mana spell, you're up quite a bit on tempo and on board state, just everything. This is three to equip. Nice, that's exactly that's exactly what I what I wanted him to do. Like I really don't care if he gains the life. That's like that's fine by me. I'm kind of telegraphing that I have something, but it doesn't matter because I'm so far ahead right now. All he has is a uh, expensive equipment, nothing on the board. He's got to catch up and 
he's going to have to play through this at some point. Like, if he plays a two drop at this point or a three drop, like, I'm, I'm not too worried. I'm still winning the race. And, you know, that probably shuts down whatever this card is. That's a foretold card. So when you cast it, even though you're casting it for reduced mana, mana cost, this Daneful Stroke can still counter because it counters the converted mana cost, which is the actual cost printed on the card. Perfect target. <laughs> So good turn for us. Nothing. All right. All right. So let's just attack first. Uh, I'm not going to play around the sweeper. In these colors, I'm only worried about like the. Um, uh, my God, the 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 white spell. And he's not playing snow, so he's unlikely to have blood on the snow. We haven't seen red, so Battle of Frost and Fire, unlikely. Okay, that's good. That's a strong play. So let's see, we can go Rune and Mistwalker. I like that, so let's give this guy flying, draw a card. Most likely he trades with Augury Raven, and then I just play another Mistwalker and pass. So even if he equips and attacks, he's at 11. I can crack back for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And he'd be using half of his mana just to equip. This is really not a good card. It's not a card, it's not a card that like white decks want because white decks don't really want to go up to such a high um, high high land count. Like you don't really want to pay seven for this effect. It's a good effect, but white white decks are not excited about casting seven mana spells. So I think this is probably the weakest of all the equipment, even though it makes you essentially a four four vigilance. Flying Angel for five mana. <laughs> so I can't really pump because of first strike. Does he have a trick? So then in this case, I'm going to pump twice and play, uh, pump once and play Inga. That's bizarre. Why, why, why is he chumping? Did he think I had lethal? I don't think I had lethal. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And he blocks one of these? Seems like a bad block. Now the question is like, do I even need to play something here? So he goes back up to seven, he can equip. Nah, I guess he can equip. I don't want, he, he's gonna keep gaining life. So plus this uh, sets me up nicely for the coming turns. So even if he does have a board wipe, then I can follow up with Bergstrider. I mean, technically I don't even have to block this attack because I'm threatening lethal next turn. So he would have to have some something really good given that I have Bergstrider on top of my library. Yep. Nice. So I think we're undefeated so far. This would be a six and oh, if we win. Crush the weak as always, let's do a check. So that's one target, two targets, three targets. So it's definitely coming in. 
Crush the Week is definitely coming in. And um, I guess again, Lunar Flight is out. If these cards get better when you can equip helms and other equipment on their own, they're okay. They're not terrible. I mean, Kyle Ross takes them quite highly. That's the ham. One of my favorite limited players, just completely different thinker. I mean, this guy's way ahead of everyone else. Like he's the guy that plays so much limited that I think even players like Alessi and Ben Stark, they go check out his draft to see what he's doing differently. And uh, of course he doesn't have as much recognition in the game as the Hall of Famers that I mentioned, but personally, I think he, I think Kyle Ross should be in the Hall of Fame. I have a feeling they don't want him not because of his, uh, has nothing to do with his skill. He's just kind of a, a bit of a mean and rude player, like in the opinion of some people. I don't, I personally don't think so. I mean, that's just who he is as a person, but I'm guessing that Wizards, when Wizards of the Coast or Hasbro think of their like, you know, MTG ambassadors, Guys like Kyle Ross are not the first ones that come to mind, of course, because you want, as an organization, you want your pro players to portray a certain image that represents your organization, the game, and everything else. And maybe they don't uh, see that in Kyle, even though he has a massive following. Come on, give me Omen Kill. Yes, Omen Keel in our opening hand, and I can cast it. <laughs> I mean, all right, our opponent mulliganed. So let's think about it. Our options are Omen Keel or Dwarven Reinforcements. I think I'm just gonna go Omen Keel again. He probably has the Raven. This is such a cool card design. I love this. Oh, he did it again. Nice. All right. Well, now we just start getting in. Here we go. Yeah, so I can play this next turn. Interesting. So why is he not casting his suspend cards? Hmm. So I guess I want to use up all my mana. That means I guess I yeah, I guess I want to play Inga. Cool omen kill with Inga. Bottom all my lands. We can keep Mist Blocker on top. Jumping. Okay. So this tells me that he probably has Doomscar. That that type of chump is very concerning. By the way, Omen Kill is another reason. Uh, like another reason why Omen Kill is good is because it plays around. Uh, it plays around uh, uh, just board wipes like that. So do we play Shimmer Drift Veil? I guess what we want to do is we want to play Mistwalker pre-combat. Probably want to leave up Squash. Yeah, so this makes sense. Equip Omen Kill with the Summoning Sickness creature and get in for seven. Yeah, let's play Island. And you know, I'm just going to foretell. He's got two lands. 
even if he wipes my board, just we can finish him off with dwarven reinforcements. All right. Easy, easy finals. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's get our gems and our uh, and our packs. And should we do another one? I think let's do another one. Well, you can't ask for a better pack one, pick one. This card's awesome and it makes some cards better like um, <clears throat> The one three dwarf that makes treasure and the three mana draw to discard one that makes a treasure. So nothing even close. Red's also a good color. Makes sense to pick the dragon over the removal because uh, black's a weaker color, as I as I've said. Yeah, shackles of shackles of treachery also works. Oh no, I'm sorry. This doesn't this doesn't make a treasure. Decent sideboard card though. All right, so from this pack, probably just Mirror Lake. I mean, we can end up Giants, Red, Blue, and then, you know, we can maybe get mana off uh, off treasures, make another dragon. I mean, what's, what's better than the first dragon, the second dragon? They're not legendary either, so you can play as many of them as you can cast. Or copy. So let's see, there's a frostbite for us in red. There's a sculptor. I don't know, this is pick three. There's no red cards in here, so I'm not sure that red is open. I mean, frostbite's the only red card, right? But we do have a dragon already, so I'm gonna speculate on this over leaning into green. Hmm. So Lindworm's also a reason to take since we have Narrow Lake. There's also Dwarven reinforcements. This doesn't really want to pair with red. This wants to go with blue, I think, more. Let's just, I mean, we could also just take the snow-covered mountain, I guess. Fourth pick mountain could be a signal that snow is open. So maybe I just take the mountain instead of leaning into a different color. I think it's a bit too early for that. I mean, we did just get past the Feed the Serpent. And we could wheel a relevant black card from here. I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind this color combination, but there's a Berg Strider, and that see that's why you take Snow Covered Mountain. Easy Berg Strider. Yeah, I mean, uh, Runamox ranked highest, and I I agree. Like if I was white, I'd take Tormentor's Helm. But in these colors, Rodamok's really good, especially if we can get the gold um, frost, uh, frost Giant. <clears throat> I forgot what the legendary one, the three mana one that draws you a card whenever you deal extra damage. I can never, I can never remember the names of these cards. Rodamok's a good combo with that as well. Uh, you know, I like Disdainful Stroke over Mists. I'm not sure why this is ranked lower. I don't agree with that ranking. Could have also taken a pop, but I don't think we're going to be like the aggro deck. Hmm. There is a good green card with Horizon Seeker. We can also take a colorless card with uh, Raider's Crave. I think I'll take the colorless card just in case.
Easy Dwarven Reinforcements. I think this is a much better card than Frost, Frost Peak Yeti. This is definitely better than a 2.0. I think, I think they got the ranking wrong on this. They may have even said it in one of their latest podcasts. I'm talking about limited resources, of course. <clears throat> My favorite source for all things MTG. I mean, obviously Marshall's cool, but LSV is just... He's he's a, I don't know if he's the best of all time, but he's uh, certainly my my favorite player. That's for sure. So sometimes when this happens, it could be that the person we're passing to is just disconnected, <laughs> um, or making picks really really slowly. So whoever's next to him is lucking out, and I guess I'll luck out next turn. I mean, if he's just randomly passing to me, that's that's a good thing. I'm, I'm most likely to play a Blood Sky Berserker in case I somehow end up in black. Mm. Sure, we can take a Hagi Mod. Maybe we'll, we'll get the demon that gets bigger, gets counters whenever you boast. That makes Hagi Mod a little better, although your two drop usually doesn't survive that long, but still. Easy Helm. I think with two Dwarven reinforcements, this uh, probably makes the main deck. And now I'm a bit more open to taking runes as well. But why is this a one? What? What? <laughs> that has to be a mistake, right? Creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. At the beginning of each combat, you may attach it to or equipment attach. You may attach or equipment attach to creature you control to target the creature you control. So you can reattach for free, and then Sword of the Realms just keeps bringing back your stuff. This is totally worth splashing just for Sword. With Dwarven, well, it doesn't work with Dwarven reinforcements, but returning dragons and Berk Striders to your hand. I mean, come on. That's definitely a typo. <laughs> This is not a one. That's too fun. I love the description too. It's just so short. Like this, this card has no place in your deck. <laughs> equipped creature gets plus two plus one has vigilance. Whenever equipped creature dies, returns to owner's hand. So this, I mean, definitely works with Berg Strider. You can bounce Berg Strider. Keep, keep things tabbed down after recasting it. So I guess if this is from the, uh, what's that series called? Oh my God, Song of Ice and Fire, that HBO series. I guess this is the wood, this is the giant from that, kind of looks like him. Game of Thrones, of course, is the show I'm thinking of. It's funny I forgot the name, like, I know that there hasn't been a book published or any episodes in a long time, and yeah, the last season was, like, really bad. I agree with most of the negative opinions out there concerning that, but uh, still, yeah, I think the set has a couple of references to that. We don't really have any two drops to bring back. There's nothing in here that I, that I really want. We can speculate on actually just going red white. That's a possibility. You know, in that case, I might take. I might take Shepherd because I mean Halvar is really good. Like if I'm getting past good white cards after Hal Halvar, I don't mind uh, pivoting. Pivoting it into uh, Boros, and I think the player next to us is disconnected, so we're likely to just get past random goodies. So there's another mirror like, but don't think that's happening. Maybe I should just take a Valkyrie or even Shield Mate. Shield Mate is good with Helm. 
I'd rather, you know what, with Havlar, I'd rather just have a solid two drop that I can keep bouncing back to my hand. I think that's a bit more important. Yeah, Fearless Liberator is also very good. Easily taking that over Verdict. I can't believe Verdict is ranked a whole point higher. This this card lets you run away with games sometimes. Are these even right? No, this is... I thought maybe that the scores are out of whack. That's so crazy. Um, so probably just a snow-covered plane in case we do end up running or splashing Strider. There's also Mistwalker. Hmm. Let's just go deep. Let's just go three color. Because this lets us splash. Yeah, I'm actually happy I did that now because there's a glimpse. I'm going to take glimpse over Snow Covered Mountain because this helps me fix full white. And this is pack two. I only need like two more Snowlands to make Burke Strider decent. So I'm going to take glimpse. Another frostbite? Eh. Yeah, I don't mind. Ooh, I really want that snow covered island, but there's another shield made in here. I don't want to take the shield meat. All right, I think at this point, I'm definitely not playing. Well, Depart the Realm is a bit better with Vega, but still I'd rather just have another Dwarven Reinforcements with a Tormentor's Helm. All right, so I'm definitely not playing Feed the Serpent. We didn't see any more black. Not interested in, oh, no, 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 wrong card, wrong card. If you ever want a master class on how to play this card, which is ranked very low, go watch Kyle Ross. Take a, I'll take a long bow. That's again, Mr. Ham. He makes ridiculous green, white, super low curve, 15 land aggro decks with uh, arachnoforms protected by the mystic veils. Best of three, I guess I want uh, a null. <laughs> I'm more likely to play this because it draws me a card. Also, it's not the worst thing to bring back to your hand with Pavlar. Hagi Mob. Avalanche Caller with one snow covered mountain is not exciting. Valkyrie Sword. I'm not crazy about it, but it's easier to cast off Gold Span Dragon if you can get the um, the treasure. There's nothing in here that I really want. I guess if we end up going deeper on white, I want a Story Seeker. Pack three Avalanche Caller, just with one Snow Covered Mountain, and I'm not even sure if I'm playing blue. No, let's just let's just take a story seeker. Ooh, there's another Burke Strider though. And there's a Firewalker. I think with the Runamok, I want at least one of these in my deck. And again, I'm not really I'm looking less like a snow deck, more like a reg, more like an aggro red white deck. And there's another firewalker. There's also waking the trolls. But if I'm gonna splash, I'm gonna splash for white for uh, or for blue, maybe for like Burke Strider or Inga. I think this is just the responsible pick. Like this is going to win you more. A card like this is going to win you more games than six mana, do nothing until like turn seven, eight. Yeah, do nothing until turn nine, turn 10 when you can actually attack with them. No, thank you. I'm just going to take another Firewalker. Firewalker. Uh, I don't definitely don't want a third Frostbite. I guess I just want a Ravager because bouncing this to your hand with Havlar is also pretty cool. And we should just go aggro. Yeah, it's pretty clear. Squash, easy pick. I really hope I can wheel that run amok. If I can do that, that would be sweet. Uh, easy dual land in case 
Yeah, this makes Burke Strider more playable now. Same with Vega, depending on how much um, foretell stuff I end up with. Yep. So do I have duplicates? So I do have a frostbite. So Frostbite Arcanist can find a frostbite. But if I'm taking any anything from here, all right, let's let's count. I have four lands and already more playables. I'm just taking a snow covered island. Blood Sky Massacre Wield. Nobody's nobody's black red. Uh, just a mist walker. I mean, Mistwalker with a helm and a bunch of blue mana is no joke either. Easy, easy helm. I'll play two of these all day long in this deck. So probably long bowed out, disdainful stroke is out. I actually don't mind again with, with the gold span dragon. This can ramp you. Oh sweet, run amok wield. I think I just I'm just gonna end up cutting the cutting the blue right now. And uh <clears throat> this is looking like a like a Boros Agro deck. Yeah, that's not a, that's not an irrelevant card, by the way. <laughs> Cards like that are important because they help you decide whether to run seventeen or sixteen lands. Usually, when you have a looter like that, you lean towards playing the one extra land because you could always toss it for value later, and you smooth out your draws. Definitely don't want a mirror lake. Uh, so this is fifty one. All right, so let's say I cut all the blue, cut Vega, cut Stroke, Cosmos. Maybe keep Runga and Runga. <laughs> Inga Runa is Runga. Okay, now we got to cut that. Cut one Hoggy Mob. Still 44 cards. 17 lands. So I got to make four cuts as it is. I don't know, I kind of kind of like everything. I guess Doom's car, how many creatures do we have? 13. And that makes 16 with the dwarven reinforcements. Doom's car oracles only so so. I mean, just compare it with like the, the Firewalker. So creatures of control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. So I wonder how often I'm gonna cast this. This Halvar and how often I'm going to cast this as Sword of the Realms. Maybe in best of three, like game one, it's okay to show Sword early and then just assume he's sideboarding and equipment destruction and then play out Halvar. It's probably how I would play it in best best of three, especially if opponent's playing like green or white that has the enchantment hate. Can we play can we play 16 lands? With a, with two firewalkers, is that greedy? I don't have too many giants, so actually, I mean, this thing's going to be five quite often. The only giant I have is uh, is a ravager, so I think I don't want to go to sixteen. And Immersturm, like I was saying, I mean, this can filter out a land if you get stuck with extra lands, so. Let me think about what the what the last cut is, and then we'll start. You know, forget it. With, with two Firewalkers, I'm just going to cut a land. I'm going to be greedy. I'm going to run 16 lands. So we're going to cut a, a white source. Wait, why do I have 18 five? 
and then nine seven. This, this is double white, so I'm okay with seven. This is not really double white. This is double white though. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to have at least 10. Do I have any other red? This also requires red. All right, I want to play one more mountain. Um, <laughs> immediately punished. I mean, yeah, we have to log in this. You know, it's not, not that bad of a hand, to be honest. I'm perfectly fine with this. Anytime I start with a Fearless Liberator and a Rodamok, I'm happy. As long as our opponent isn't playing red, we're not going to get smashed with Frostbite, and we can make at least one critter, which should make up for the early flood and the fact that we just drew another land. And of course, opponents playing snow red. Ah, oh, that's a demon bolt, isn't it? So do I suspend reinforcements? I'm gonna take my chances. Because if he wants to use his Demon Bolt and the two drop, I'm fine with that. Nice. So now I'm going to have three Berserkers. Next turn I can kill this or uh, X for Toughness with Ravager, but we do need to take one turn off. An attack. Well, I, I like seeing that. I think this card also overperforms, safe to say. So let's think about this. I have five mana. I, I think I just want to get my two one, to be honest. This makes sure that my, this is not the most mana efficient play, but this makes sure that my Ravager can deal five next turn. Or no, sorry. Four to part the round. Yeah, like he's using a card for half a card or just, you know, mana that I sunk. I'm, I'm very happy about that. And I hope he attacks with uh, Reaper again because then I can... Wither Crown. I'm going to decline for now. Let's see what I draw.
pass. So I do not have three snow permanents. Can this hit the face? Any target, yeah. That's a good target for Frostbite, especially if he's attacking with both. Okay, so let's take that. Now we Frostbite Draugr. I'm going to decline for now. Oh, decisions, decisions. So five mana, so we can't really Helm effectively. We can play Ravager and then play Helm end of turn. I like the idea of getting in for six here. Because now our opponent can't really attack. He's, just, he's effectively at four with Helm. And now squash, now we get the squash discount of the one card in our deck that can do it. By the way, we're winning with no white mana. <laughs> yeah, that's probably too little too late. All right, so that was game one. Let's see what our opponent's playing. We didn't get a crush the week, did we? No. You know, it's not crazy to think that this might be a thing for our deck. With three Dwarven reinforcements, I think like, there's at least some consideration that can be given to putting in open the, uh, open the Omen Paths. I mean, the card's like generally bad, but between the flexibility and the fact that we're such an aggro deck, there's something to be said for this. Having said that, I still don't think that we have a card worse than this. What's our worst card? I have no idea. So our opponent still didn't see Halvar, so there's no reason to put in like uh, a seventh, uh, a seventh planes. I think like if it's round three, I'm on the play, and my opponent has seen the sword. I'm playing seven planes to make sure I can hit double white. Well, now we don't have now we don't have any freaking now we don't have a second land. There were 45. So, I mean, look, with two draws, we're 90% chance to hit a land. I'm going to keep this. It's a, You could say it's a greedy keep, but like we, we know what our odds are. We have 15 lands deck. We have 15 lands left in our deck. So, it's 45% chance to draw land each turn. We might get punished, but let's see. Now it's 47%. So, it's actually between the two draws, it's uh, 92% to hit a land. Yep, so we definitely hit it. It's not the land I want, but at least, you know, we're we're getting some action here. We could do stuff for the next two turns with another shield mate and uh, reinforcements. Even if we get a third planes, we can always play a raider's uh, carve. Uh, I think I'm attacking. There's no guarantee that I can block, so I might as well attack. Plus, I have another thing that can block anyway. We do need to draw land, of course. So let's see, no attacks, interesting. I mean, if you're offering the trade, then I'll, I'll take that any day. Huh? Why would you why would you do that? Why wouldn't you do that before attacks? Does that make sense to do that before attacks? You just you miss getting in three damage. I don't understand that. I mean that's that's the type of mistake that I used to make when I was just starting out. Like, is he hoping that I'm not gonna block with my cheaper creature? Strange. Yes, thank you. So let's think about this. There's an argument to play Raider's Carve. Well, 
because next turn I can play Firewalker. This will help me find my lands, make sure I can play Dragon. And Dragon will just help me win the game straight up. I'm going to attack here. Yeah, there's like a, you know, 40, 40 something percent chance given that I have 13 lands left in my deck. There's a, there's a higher probability that this will find something. Well, now I think I have to keep my creatures back to block. This is a little scary. So I might just attack with the carve. Ooh, are you going to tap the carve? Yeah, you are. But he didn't have... He did not have... So I can't even play and equip this. Yuck, that's so bad. Man. Unfortunately, the only play I have is I got to play Firewalker. Does this have first strike? No, it doesn't. It's just a 4-4. Four, four. It's a 4-4 four, four that trades with Bird Strider. Why isn't this showing? Ah, never mind. It's actually correct. It's going to untap on my turn. So I actually have decent blocks here. I'm going to take four. Oof, that's brutal. Why not? It'll it'll give our team morale, even though it's tapped. <laughs> I think I got a block like this. <laughs> I think I'm just dead, right? So e even if I play Fearless Liberator, like I can equip this. I can block, but this will have menace and I'm just dead. Oh, so I would need to frostbite, but then I can't play liberator. Oh, it's so bad. I guess I'm not that on board. So I frostbite the draugr and um, Probably better off suspending Dwarven Reinforcements at this point. This gives me the best chances to survive. I mean, if our opponent's got nothing, I could even double block Yarl, so maybe I'm not doing that bad. Well, again, I'm not dead on board. I'm down on one. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm effectively dead. Even if I draw land, I would need to somehow kill the flyer. And I just can't do that. I don't have removal. So. I don't know. Maybe he forgets to attack. Never mind. Okay, so it's 1 1. Sideboard plan. Do I have a sideboard plan? Does it make sense to like throw in a bunch of blue cards and throw a curve ball? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We could swap. The the white cards for the blue cards, but what would what would that what would that give us? Does the strength of our, of our cards increase on average? I'm not even sure to be honest. Mm. My glimpse is not even that great. Well, it gets a little bit better because I'd be adding in a mist walker and a strider, so our deck would have card draw. Could still, probably play seven, 16 lands, especially if I'm cutting shepherd, and if I have 
Let's try it, why not? So 19 lands and then, all right, so I take out all the planes. It's 13. Looks about right. So it's seven. So it's eight. Eight, ten. And I need to make a cut. You could probably cut like a hoggy mob. Just gonna add any mountain because I'm running out of time. Done. How about that? Sideboard into <laughs> sideboard into blue. You know, sometimes there's value in doing this in in uh, you know game three, for example, because your opponent just doesn't see it coming, so they're not gonna they're not gonna play uh, the correct. They're less likely to play the correct way. Is what I'm trying to say. So no, we still suspend Dwarven reinforcements. I really actually hope to draw a Tormentor Storm with both of these in my hand and a Ravager. That's a pretty strong start. So is there any point in... So do we want to play a tap land? I think we do. I think we go Dwarven reinforcements because this way we'll be able to nail something with uh, Ravager next turn. And then we'll be activating smash so squash so we'll be we'll be really on fire yeah like this is good i mean i could see if he wants to trade first i could give him the opportunity to trade for one of these two i'd rather do that all right i mean in that case then i'm just going to play more of these i'd rather kill this like after he attaches a rune or invests in playing you know inefficient spells just to make this bigger Sure, that's kind of that's kind of what I was talking about. This is this is a much better setup. More more value. Definitely no locks. Well, I mean, now there's an argument for maybe letting this live. I could still kill it with squash next turn as a five five. So I think I think we just go get aggro here. I'm gonna kill the berserker, forcing him to. I guess it, it didn't matter. Yeah, I could have killed either one of these. This is just like more messing with his head. You're forcing him to trade a better creature. Probably actually should have killed the three two. Come to think of it. Yeah. Interesting. I think I'm just going to play Firewalker, actually equip Helm on Firewalker and pass. Short, short. Okay, so now we can squash this. 
Uh, decline. Ooh, does this change anything? <clears throat> I don't think it does. I think I still want to go. Well, let's let's just attack boast. Okay. So this pings him for one. Kind of draws me a card. Now we can squash this before it gets too big. And we can play another Firewalker. And the next turn we tap down Birch Strider. And I think that's that's game. And we can even equip Helm. Oh yeah, if, especially if he's tapping that to look for answers. That's that was a mistake. I think he should have he would have been able to trade this off. And now he's just in a in a lot of trouble. So let's play Burke Strider, see if this gets countered. Okay, and now. So on our way to back-to-back uh, -back three nose again, two more. So hopefully we're not gonna have to maul. Not bad, three lands in the opening hand. Oh, this is good. This is perfectly fine. I'd like to draw Helvar. That would be pretty sweet. Helvar on Ravager. Not Helvar, the sword. Yeah, Sword of the Realms. Excellent card. Artwork's just amazing on that as well. Whoa. We're playing against Drog. Honestly, whenever I see a Revitalize, I'm not concerned. I'm not sure why he main phased it. Next turn, we can draw a card, keeping up Ranamok. Just making sure that I tap a Plains instead of a Mountain for the boast ability. So, <laughs> It's interesting, like the draw two decks, they're typically bad, but I think people have figured it out and they're really not, um, oh, that's terrible. Not drafting them too much. So let's stack with both. Mm, that's unfortunate. That's gonna go to that's gonna be wasted. Um I'm not there's no need to run amok there just to get damage in. I'd rather trample over something. But that just kind of exiled one of my premium removal spells from my deck still. That doesn't mean that you should not use the boast ability, which is an unfortunate example with the boast ability. Valkyrie. What did he exile? Berserker. All right, all right. Well, good thing is I could still run amok over that. Only problem is if he blocks the 1-1, one, one, then they would trade. I can't Ravager, and I don't want to use a Squash, so I'm going to attack just with the Firewalker, pretending like I'm offering the trade, and let's see what he does. Nothing. So let's boast first. I don't think I played a land this turn. I shouldn't have, so that's perfect. Okay. 
So now Ravager can deal four. So this is Berserker. Yeah, it can deal three actually. Okay. He wants to re-equip. Well, we could go Ravager into Smash now. I think that's the best play, right? So let's go Ravager, killing the Valkyrie. Um, I guess I can also run Amok, but I'd rather just smash Squash. Our opponent's got one card left, and we're just going to run over him right now. I don't get to Bose this turn, but unless he has a Sweeper, it's just game from this point. So what do we see? So this is a bit of life gain. Life gain is actually, it's, it's not that bad against us because we're trying to be aggro. Like against the Burroughs deck, this is better than average. Having said that, it's still quite bad. Even in the draw two deck, I don't think you should, I don't think you should be trying to go off of this. <laughs> anything Oh yeah, that's a good target. <clears throat> it's interesting, 17 lands was uh, saying that they did an analysis of whether it makes sense to boast of this card on turn one or not, and if the games uh, play out differently, and the answer was it's about the same, which is interesting, which means that, uh, you know, this is the type of card that that's better in the hands of stronger players. I guess all cards are better in the stronger players, but. Cards like this particularly, because you really need to think about what your hand looks like, what your removal is, what your opponent's playing. <laughs> like two mana for a one one is not a, is not a game changer, but it, it is free, so it's not a, it's not like insignificant. I guess in the two spells deck, it's a bit better because you get to use your mana and you get to save your cheap spell, so you can um, you know do two things in one turn. That just looks god awful. So let's go reinforcements, equip, and see if we can spike a land on top. Nope. But I'll take a Hoggy Mob. That's not bad. Of course, next turn it's Goldspan Dragon with the haste. And. Our opponent's stuck on lands. I think this is going to be a very quick game. Yeah, so let's just go dragon. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised to just see a concession, just because our opponent's stuck on two lands. Let's see if we can thin our deck a little bit. Take action. He just so yeah he, he's gonna block the crave and just take a hit from the dragon so if this is the deal five dragon's dead but i get to make another treasure no attack there is really bad for op that's just bad news i'm gonna play hoggy mob this turn over Shepherd, I'm gonna. I mean, does this fly? 
but with him having one blocker, this represents more damage because he needs to block the carve. We could also, I mean, we could kind of also do this, right? I mean, at this point, I'm willing to sacrifice one of the, uh, oh, run looks great. I'm willing to sacrifice one of the dwarves to get an extra two, to get an extra four points of damage in. Let's see, he didn't even go for it. So now, ah, it's letting me cast Shepherd. There's absolutely no reason to play Shepherd. It's just, you're, you're risking getting smashed with a Dooms card. And then I have plenty of lethal on board. All right, so one away from back-to-back -back three no's. I want to have a look and see how, how low my limited ranking dropped, given that I didn't play for a day. So last I checked, I mean, I, the, the highest I think was like 470 for me. Um, and then from there, it just kind of crept lower. And now I'm probably 550, 532, not bad. So season ends in two days. It's unlikely I'm going to fall below 1200. I'm pretty much guaranteed. And uh, I do want to get my constructed ranking up. I'd like to finish top 1200 constructed and limited. I've never done that before just because it usually takes so much time. But... Uh, I think uh, the, the limited, limited content is more interesting. And recording uh, standard videos is probably more interesting once you're playing like in the mythic rankings because their decisions tend to be a bit harder, and it's easy to lose making a, making a simple mistake. Playing uh, recording constructed for like gold tier is not really interesting. Wow! Finally, we got to have have our in our opening hand. Then we got Dwarven reinforcements. Oh, this is this is looking good. Just Spare Sentinel, nice. This card's also gone up. I think during the initial reviews, this is kind of written off as a uh, whatever, but it's a, it's a decent card. I'm not even sure why I'm playing Snow Covered Mountain. Do I have three? Yeah, I don't even have three snow permanents, do I? I just realized that <laughs> I'm playing a frostbite and two two snow tournaments uh, uh, permanents. So this this thing will never deal three. So. I could go Dwarven Reinforcements and keep up Frostbite. I could also go Firewalker. Let's go Firewalker. If I get a Planes next turn, I can equip an attack for five. <laughs> Throne of Death. So this card mills you for one. And um, it's not bad. All right, so let's stack. And then you can draw cards. And it's a god on the other side. So hopefully this is not another squash. Nice, mountain damage. This is good. Dwarven reinforcements, keeping up frostbite. And you got to be careful with this thing because if, like, if it's a control mirror match, you might end up just milling yourself. So, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how good of a limited card this is. You're kind of like 
discarding a card, suspending for a couple of turns, and hoping to like draw two to get value by turn what? Turn four, turn five. I think it's too slow. It's a bit too slow for this format. Ooh, please, please play Arachniform right now. Please play some sort of equipment so I can just snipe that. Mm. Uh, that's not something I can snipe, but that is something I can run amok. I think I'm still gonna frostbite the Raptor. I don't want a two one first striker against my uh, two ones. It's not a good way to go. Let's attack with everything. No blocks. Okay. Your opponent's got a weird deck. I'm not sure why he's playing this random 2-4 white angel cleric that gains life in a, in a Sultai deck. It's got Glittering Frost, Rune of Sustenance. This deck doesn't look like it has much synergy. And he's got Elder Hall. <laughs> All right. I mean, yeah, this costs white to equip. So... Do I want to frostbite pre-combat? I don't think I do. Let's just get in here. Can he even draw a card? Does he have a creature? He's got Raptor. No blocks. So wait, so is it just lethal with run amok? All right, never mind. It was lethal anyway, right? Because it's four, eight. No, nah, that's eleven. He didn't block, so you just let let eleven damage through. Do we do the blue sideboard thing on the draw? <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to. What's he? What's he playing? So he's playing this weird. He's playing this weird five color. Elder Hall, Port of Carfell. Utility lands, card draw. So he's got like a really slow deck. Question is, do we want to go more control against that? I don't think though. I don't think so. I think we still just run him over. We're gonna spike a gold span dragon on turn five with perfect mana. Oh, it's in our opening hand. Nice. One land, yuck. See, this is the type of hand that I'm going to mull because I have I have a like two five drops, a four drop. I do have Dwarven Reinforcements, but um, man, this is tough. All right, let's 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 risk it. Well, we spiked the land. That's good. Another one would be really nice. That was a really greedy keep. I think I should have mulliganed that, to be honest. Like a hand where I have both of my mana, like red, red and white, is just so much better. But at least I'm doing something with my mana now. This is fine. So is he playing the 2-4 Angel? Nope. Planes? 
planes. Immerstrom Raider. Well, actually, now I'm going to play this. I'm going to toss um, probably just a hockey mob. Nice. All right, now we're in business. So we didn't miss our, we had a slow start, but we didn't miss our land drops. And now we're, now we're in business because we're going to have Basalt Ravager online um, in a turn. Hopefully we'll get another land and we can attack through whatever he plays with Runamuck and then suspend all the reinforcements again. No plays, interesting. So could this be like a counter? It doesn't have double blue. I think the coast is clear. I think we just attack. So any X3 that he plays, I can kill with Ravager. <clears throat> it's, it's looking good for us. I mean, it was a greedy keep, but we're still gonna, it looks like we're still gonna win. I mean, our opponent is doing nothing. He's got three cards in hand and one in exile. This is so slow to draw cards. One of his best cards, one of the best cards in this deck is in the, is in the graveyard. And, uh, yeah, no attacks. All right, all right. So I'm not going to play anything pre-combat. But I am going to run amok, and if he has a trick, I can frostbite in response. And if he doesn't have anything, then I'm just going to play Dwarven Reinforcements. He could have the uh, Glorious Protector. Yeah, so let's just kill the Raptor now. This way he doesn't save it. And he still takes the damage from... Yeah, it's only creatures you control. And he's still going to take take the damage from the Trample. Uh, and uh, I have Squash next turn to kill that. Or I can just kill it with Ravager if I can get... Dwarven reinforcements down. This is still not great for him. He's not really in a position to race. If he's got a blocker, I wouldn't I wouldn't blame him for racing. Interesting. So is the play gold spin dragon an attack? Or squash this. I think I'm going to keep up squash. He might play like a fight spell. I hate the fact that I'm missing out on my discount, but I think this is the this is the better play. There's not too many things that our opponent can play. In response, like, yeah, there's pump spells, but there's also a probability that he's going to play like an enchantment. And I can smash this before. Oh, especially if he taps out. Is he tapping out for this? That's fine by me. Um, I'll be able to kill this with Ravager, so I'm still going to squash. And actually, I can do both now, right? So this is going to be five. Yeah, it's just perfect. That's so sweet. This is why I like sandbagging Ravager until later. And that's game. All right, back to back to I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's a bit too late, so I'm not going to do a third one. But um, that's really cool, posting back to back 3-0 videos. I don't think this one was 6 so I think I lost one match i don't remember i was recording throughout the day and pausing so i'll have to play it back and see but anyway 
either way, we lost very few rounds even in that run and uh, netted some gems, netted some gold. Good stuff. See you next time.